For India's post-independence generation, this voice evokes the joy of Hindi film music with a habit of radio. In that socialist era, Amin Sayani's programs and commercials were about a little bit of choice. Amin Sayani, you're going to preempt everything I do, isn't it? Because you have made a legendary career out of being on this side of the camera. I must tell you a little secret success hmm. uh, very briefly and that is I am a commercial broadcaster who gives people headaches with my programs and then sells them analgesics to get rid of those <laughs> headaches and if that doesn't work then I sell them toothpastes <laughs> in order that they learn how to grin and bear it <laughs> but as far as my broadcasting career goes the the one thing the, the basis the most important thing in my career is the fact that I was always the wrong man at the right place. Mm. Uh, kicked around towards various goalposts and mm. somehow it clicked. Uh, for instance, I, I was born in a Kachi family mm. which had never been to Kutch and didn't speak Kachi. Bombay, uh, born and brought Absolutely up. Absolutely, yeah. Bombay, bom born and brought up. Mumbai, mm. as they say. Mm. And uh, uh, there were a number of languages all sort of clashing with each other in my family. It was mainly Gujarati uh, and a lot of English because my mother had gone, uh, had a governess at home and had learned in English. So I went to a Gujarati school to begin with and uh, I used to, uh, for seven years I learned Gujarati and I could, I, I could read, write, uh, speak and think in Gujarati. I even counted in Gujarati. I still count in Gujarati and it's, it's quite mm. quick to do so. Mm. Now my brother Hamid became an exceptional English broadcaster mm. and when I was about seven he started taking me to All India Radio mm. and started introducing me to English broadcasting. So from the age of seven till almost till the age of 16 I was an English broadcaster. Mm. I had not uh, studied Hindi too much or Urdu too much. But what happened was that uh, in around 1950, Radio Salon opened an agency in India mm. and they had a section which was a, a program production section and my Hami, um, brother Hamid mm. became the program director. So I went to him and said, for God's sake, you my guru Hamid, bhai, give me some work in commercial yeah. broadcasting. He said, look, I uh, am doing the one or two English programs only that are there, so you won't get a chance there. You can assist me if you wish. Mm. But in the Hindi section, we have lots of excellent uh, Hindi broadcasters. And you have been a Gujarati student, an English broadcaster. You haven't studied Hindi or Urdu. So you better go and study it, study it first, mm. and then uh, you'll, you'll be allowed to do some. Growing up in a family that spoke Gujarati and English meant that his attempts at getting started in Hindi broadcasting were rejected. It was by fluke that one day hanging around the Radio Salon Bombay studio that was at St. Xavier's College that he was asked to read a commercial and the rest as they say is history. He uh, called me and said, I mean, here, here, here. I see you for a lot of all you do is you sit on the back bench and ogle at all the girls, yeah. you don't do any work here. I know that you are an English broadcaster and a Gujarati student, but uh, here is a Hindi script. My commercial broadcaster has not come today and he is giving me a uh, tremendous amount of problems. Will you just tell somebody to dictate it to you into Roman and, and read it out? I said, Srivastaji, I may not be speaking very good Hindi and Urdu, but I know the Urdu script, I know the Hindi script and I know the Gujarati script, all three fluently. He said, how did that happen? I said, my mother was uh, Shishya of Gandhiji and for almost 20 years, uh, at that time it was about almost uh, 12 years, uh, my mother had been editing and publishing from my house uh, magazine in three scripts. Urdu, Hindi and Gujarati but in the same language, right. simple Hindustani mm. which Gandhiji wanted to make the national language. Mm. Hmm? So I said I know the script and I read out the uh, commercial for him. Now I was a Naya Bharat Ka Naya Naujawan and the script was about uh, health giving drink. So I read it out with great gusto and 
uh, waving my arms and yelling and shouting. <laughs> and he just blocked his ears and said, Ho hold it, hold it, hold it. Well, what do you think you're doing? You're quarreling with somebody? We don't want any pahalwans here. Please read like a normal human being. So I was taken aback. I said, yes, sir, I'll do that. And I read a little normally. He said, theek hai, you still have a lot of Gujarati and English in your accent, but you're okay. You can, you know the script well. You read it today in the recording, let's see. Recording went off first class, first take, okay. And uh, then he said, Acha, you now you come every week and be my mm -hmm. Hindi announcer. Now that was my first job in, in Hindi broadcasting. Just reading that little commercial of Ovaltine. And so I was overjoyed and I said, but Srivastri, this is a commercial radio, so I'm sure you're going to pay me. <laughs> so I said, Who are you going to, who's going to pay you? Don't be silly. All you're going to get is one tin of Ovaltine every week. <laughs> and to that, I think uh, I owe my good health in broadcasting, 57 years. I, I just want to go back a little bit. You, you did not consider anything else ever. I did actually. I had lots of ambitions. I wanted to become a lawyer. Mm. I wanted to become a politician and end up as the Prime Minister of India. Mm. <laughs> Having grown up in a, in a very nationalistic yeah. uh, thing, I always had great ideas of what I would be when I grew up. Mm. But then all I became was a poor commentator. <laughs> It's this sponsored program, Geet Mala, that started on Radio Salon in 1952 that made Amin Sayani legendary. A jackpot competition that turned into a countdown show went on to run for 47 years and it made his breezy, chatty style iconic. Uh, if I'm going to be uh, handling such a big program, I'd better start brushing up on my Hindi and Urdu. So I started listening to a lot of songs which I was doing for Geet Mala in any case. And I started uh, reading poetry. And in my mother's uh, journal, which is called Rehbar, which means the guide, Patan mm -hmm. uh, I came across a beautiful couplet by uh, uh, Kabir, mm -hmm. which said, Pothi padi padi jag mo, pandit bhayo na koi, dhai akhar, that is dhai akshar, dhai akhar prem ka, so I said, I have not read any pothis or big tomes or, novel or books and whatnot, but I have a lot of love in my heart. So to, I can jump into this field and make it. So along with my listeners, who were all trying to learn Hindi at that particular time, because India had just become independent, I also learned my Hindi and Urdu, polished my accent, it took me about seven years to get my seven years of Gujarati off my tongue mm. and uh, slowly I started well becoming a normal human being <laughs> because you're being very modest because <laughs> uh, you know everybody really admires the way you uh, use the language and uh, you know speak it so it was it, it was interesting because you know so many things that I read or came across Help me. Uh, for instance, my prayer in broadcasting was coupled by Ghalib, which says, Ya Rab, na wo samjhe hain, na samjhenge meri baat. De aur dil unko, jo na de mujhko zabaan aur. These people are not going to understand me. Please either give them better understanding or give me better communication. All India Radio also, apart from go, uh, losing out on Indian film music, mm -hmm. had become a slightly boring kind of a, a station, um, uh, organization, where people never used to smile when they talked. They were very serious. Even if they were announcing a, a romantic song, they would <laughs> say, Ye, Akashwani ka panchrangi program hai or whatever. Uh, ab aap sunenge Muhammad Rafi or Lata Mangesh. One, when listening to it, it felt as if a great national leader had passed popped off. I never had a good voice. Uh, it, it was, what, what I did have is clarity. I had a nice collation between my thought and my speech. 
uh, I had a lot of ambition. I uh, went all out to see that my nobody got bored. Mm. I did a lot of dhum dhalaka. You owed your you owed your listener. You ensured that your listener got value for the time they absolutely, were spending with absolutely. you. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, they were pay, uh, they were giving their time. Yes. It was my job to give them entertainment. And so this was the first countdown show, and even I didn't know what exactly mm. the countdown format was. But when I started doing it, then week by week by week, I think within about five weeks at the most. The whole of India and me, we were all hooked on that format, mm. and it became a kind of a gamble. It became a kind of a risk, mm. and I also had uh, created a kind of a, uh, a ladder, a music ladder, Sangeet Siri, mm -hmm. with rungs, paydane, mm. uh, and I used to say, "Well, now it's the song is climbing from number sixteen and it's going up, up, mm. up, and it reaches the top, and there'd be a bugle, tan ta ra, <laughs> and all that." So there was fun, there was uh, excitement, everything that was m missing in so many other stations. Mm. Uh, so, so we we managed to get that kind of feel, that kind of excitement. Any uh, out of forty-two years, uh, forty-five years, forty-five years, songs that you remember? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't ask me that. There were so many. Were so yeah, many. I know. Unfair. But if you ask me. Which was the most popular film, as far mm. as songs is concerned, mm. uh, most most uh, favorite mm. of mine. Mm. I would say I'd name two films. One would be uh, Chitralekha, mm. that is Roshan's mm. Chitralekha, and the other would be Dada Barwin's Guide. Mm. I was very fond of these two tremendously. Mm. At that point was the golden period of Hindi film music and you could have actually said that okay I've got some great music to play in Geet Mala and all your it could have been pretty straightforward you didn't let it be that way why no, is that? I couldn't do that because uh, I, I wouldn't be honest with to my profession honest mm. to my life I could sacrifice my sleep I could sacrifice my family and they did suffer quite a bit but fortunately my wife I met when she was, came to work in my office. Mm. So we got married and we kept working together. Mm. The only thing that happened with my wife was that because we were working together, we hardly conversed with each other. So my advice is never marry a girl <laughs> who is working with you in that profession. <laughs>
is the basis of a good broadcaster. Mm. A good broadcaster, especially a presenter or a compare, mm. must not overshadow the person he is interviewing. He has to lift that person up, mm. get out from that person his best, tease him, nettle him a little if possible, mm -hmm. pull his leg a little bit if possible, mm -hmm. praise him, go deep into his emotional psyche, but uh, never superimpose or overimpose yourself on that person. And I think that is what my audience appreciated most, mm -hmm. that here was a person who was helping them to go into the world of music mm -hmm. and to the film that I have done, a lot of film stars too, mm -hmm. and, uh, and not interfere mm -hmm. with what is being, uh, is being said by those people. Mm -hmm. You must have heard many compares on television, on radio, who don't let that person speak. I mean, as soon as he starts saying something interesting, you cut and say, oh, Nani, now this answer this question. That is, should never be done. Mm -hmm. So by doing that, I became a representative, not of the world of films or the world of radio. I became a representative of the listener. Mm. I was a member of the listener's family. We know you and refer to you as a radio broadcaster, but at heart, what you are and what you do is about communication. What do you make of the state of communication today? I think, unfortunately, that the entire Indian communications is crumbling. I feel that there should be a move, a national movement on the part of the government and the people where in every phase of life and work, let us take the rules, the regulations, the framework, let us simplify yeah. it. Sanchar, which is communication, uske liye paanch sir zaruri hai. One is that the sanchar should be sahi, should be correct. There should be no mistakes in it. Secondly, it should be satya, it should be truthful. Thirdly, it should be spashed, absolutely clear, unambiguous. Fourthly, it should be saral, which is simple. And lastly, the last sir is sundar. It must be appealing, it must be attractive. Now, unfortunately, all our communication is losing out on all these five points because people don't understand what is happening. I mean, hi, Anit. Thank you so much for your time. And we wish you all the very, very best. And we hope that you will be proud of the communication that you're seeing around you. I hope so. I wish and pray that that happens. God bless you.